Alrighty guys, Chris here with Joe. Welcome to the good old gamer. And today we got ourselves a little tidbit of information uh, leaked, supposedly, on the RX 480. It looks like somebody went ahead and jumped on YouTube and posted some uh, video footage with the game running on the RX 480. And he had uh, the Riva Tunish statistics, sorry, uh, up in the upper right hand corner. So we got a general idea of how the cards performed. Now, what leads me to believe that these videos were actually accurate, because I was very skeptical. I was like, how, how do we really know? They weren't really prefaced properly. You know, he didn't show the card. Uh, it was just in the title, basically. But these videos have now been pulled off of YouTube. Um, I found out about this by checking out techspot.com. So if you want to check that out, the article's still there, but you'll notice all the YouTube links are gone. So that leads me to believe that these might actually be legit. So, Joe, what were your thoughts? Because you got to check them out before they got pulled. Yeah, apparently just barely. Um, so, you know, my first thought is, you know, we saw a couple different videos. We saw Doom, The Witcher 3, Counter-Strike, uh, or Go, um, and then Overwatch and Grand Theft Auto 5. Um, complete with frame rate, you know, I, I assume it looked like they were using MSI Afterburner running in the top left, so you could see the frame rates and, and that kind of stuff. So... Um, well, what I gotta say is I'm actually pleasantly surprised, extremely hopeful as a result. You know, we've talked about these new video cards coming out for you know at least several videos now, and every time we talked about it, we have done nothing but speculate and say if this is the way it is. And I guess we're still doing that now because we have no hard evidence that this is 100% legit. But from what I saw, these cards performed just as well as my GTX 970 seems to perform in all of these games. And the big thing I want to point out, which I'm sure we'll get into later, is that none of these games utilize DirectX 12. And again, as we've talked about in the past, the AMD cards and their async compute allows them to perform miles better when using DirectX 12, up to like 50% in some cases. So the fact that these ran as well as a GTX 970, roughly, in all of these games, and, and again, none of these even use DirectX 12, has me extremely excited right now. So maybe when I said pleasantly surprised, I was holding back. But the reality is I'm actually extremely excited. See, I kind of had the opposite reaction. But that's because, you know, with everything going on with NVIDIA Gate, you know, just all this stuff going on, prices not being where they're supposed to be. You know, AMD is kind of like the, the last hope, the last bastion of hope. And over Help the me, past... AMD. You're my only hope. Exactly. Obi-Wan AMD. Um, and so I think the hype has grown, you know, on these cards. AMD landed clear expectations for these cards. So basically they were saying these things are going to be around GTX uh, 970, 980 level from the beginning. The hype train grew and people started thinking these things may even get up to the 980 Ti performance. And part of me was thinking that that'd be great, you know, even if it's highly overclocked and, you know, you got to do some work to get there. I think that would be great. And as you mentioned, DirectX 12, that's one of those things that it may get there at DirectX 12. But when I was watching the videos um, and seeing the performance, it literally did look just like my GTX 970, which isn't bad. I mean, this is a $200 card here, but I was a little disappointed. I was hoping it would be reasonably superior to the 970 probably closer to the 980 level and then with the extra overclocking room that would really get me there so my expectations have been retempered back to basically what amd told us that they were going to be so it's good to know that if these are true if this, these videos were correct at the very least we are getting what we were promised so that's good yeah and i agree but you know you, you bring up the overclocking and that's another good point to talk about in these videos, you know, we saw frame rates comparable to, to a GTX 970. For instance, The Witcher 3 ran at a very comfortable 60 frames per second. I think I only saw it dip down to like 56, 55 frames per second for like very short amounts of time, you know, like a second here or there. Um, and everything else, like Doom ran incredibly smooth. And this is all on what I, what we are assuming are the standard clocks for this video card. Um, and the reason we assume that is because there's nothing in here to indicate it was overclocked. So we have to assume they're stock right now. Um, and that means that overclocking will, uh, you know, obviously increase your headroom and your overall performance. 
with these games. So I, I'm excited, as I said, I mean, for a $200 card or maybe 250 at the most, being competitive with the GTX 970, even though it is kind of a year later, um, I, I'm actually, like I said, extremely excited. And plus, I, I think the DirectX 12 is going to be the big issue. And I think with these cards performing as well as these cards, but have an upside of an additional 30, 40, 50% increase in performance once they get to a game that uses DirectX 12, I, 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 I fail to see how this isn't better than or exactly what we thought it was going to be and that we were properly excited. I mean, I know you're saying you saying you feel tempered now because AMD didn't exactly lie. They, they told you outright what it was going to be. And maybe that's the sad state of the industry is that I am now excited because these cards are doing what AMD thought. And, you know, we can look at DirectX 12 performance, you know, in, in, throughout history in terms of AMD performance. And we can reasonably expect huge increases. Well, that's really so. where it's going to that's going to make or break the card. We know it's going to run well in ashes, ashes of the singularity, you know, because right. AMD cards just rule that um, <laughs> <clears throat> they just do. Rise of the Tomb Raiders DirectX 12 is a joke, so I don't even count that. But uh, Hitman, Hitman's another good one. So we have basically two benchmarks that I know every review site and YouTuber who's got their hands on them are going to use, and we'll get a good idea of how they're really going to perform. And honestly, that's that's what they're going for. They're going for the future, you know. We saw benchmarks for DirectX 11 games. DirectX 11's the past. You know, nobody's really building video cards for DirectX 11. We'll know in a few days if that's really their silver bullet. Is basically, hey, this runs well enough now on current games, but it will run even better in the future. And that's that's something that you don't get too often, is where your video card actually gets substantially better. Of course, driver performance increases. There's usually like a 10% boost over the lifespan of a card, but like you're saying... AMD usually gets anywhere between 20 to 50% performance gains in DirectX 12. This could be monstrous, depending on how things go. So, we still have to wait on that one. See, that's all still speculation right there. But, it's good to know that at least AMD delivered on the performance that they, you know, they set the bar and they hit it. And that's good. Yeah, so what this really brings to mind to me, though, and again, and I, I've said this before, is, is Vega when it comes out. Like, if, if this is what we're seeing with the the $200 card, maybe $250, again, all speculation on price, Vega, which is supposed to be competitive with, I would say, the Tier 1 cards, or maybe, uh, for NVIDIA, um, I mean... If this is the kind of performance we're getting from their tier two version or the, their, their budget version, Vega, I think, is going to blow our minds with its value to performance. Well, I and, honestly think Polaris would be considered a tier three. I mean, this is obviously going right. up well, against makes sense. this is going up against a, a GTX 1060 and probably a 1050. That's that's kind of what these cards are going for. So this is actually a tier three card. So Vega will probably do like Polaris did. There's probably going to be a Vega 10 and a Vega 11. So there's probably going to be two tiers of Vega. And, and that's fine with me, but I, I guess my point is, and, and again, I hate to fall back on speculation, but it's, it's really all we have at this point. However, we're, we're extrapolating from data that has, it's, it may, we can make very reasonable inferences from. And if Vega is going to you know, compete with, I guess, the 1080 then, um, if, if these cards can compete with the 970 and 980, it's reasonable to expect that the Vega is going to be handily competing with the 1070 and 1080, and not including the boost from DirectX 12, could very well compete with a 1080 Ti. And for what appears to be, or what should be, a much lower price point. So this is why I'm excited. It's not so much about this card, it's about Vega and what's coming down the pipeline because if this is what AMD can do the future to me looks very bright especially for their higher end cards and you know I also want to point out that you talked about drivers and the boost you can get from it and I know you mentioned this before when we were talking about it so we definitely want to bring this up is that AMD can produce whatever cards they want if the drivers aren't there that will mean nothing Yeah, and I know you experienced this with GTA 5 if you want to talk about it <laughs> Well, I saw it in the GTA 5 video. Of course, it's not up, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, 
this may be difficult for you, um, but there's a lot of micro stuttering in the GTA 5 video that was put up. And it's the exact same experience that I had when I had an R9 380. And it's basically every 15 seconds or so, you'll have about a half a second stutter. You basically, the game will freeze for about half a second and then continue. And I did see it in the GTA 5. See, now the game, I mean, the cards aren't even released yet, so there may be a driver update, a day one driver update, and obviously that's not out now. So we don't want to, you know, really jump on AMD yet, except I just want to say that they have to nail this. If the drivers do not work in every single AAA major title day one, they might as well just pack their bags. I mean, the price might be great, but if it doesn't perform properly, you know, they're just saying, hey, NVIDIA, just take our, our market. Yeah, I agree. And lastly, the, the other thing I wanted to bring up that I was thinking about was uh, Crossfire. You know, and, and I know a lot of gamers, and I know even even NVIDIA recently said they're no longer going to support 3 and 4 times SLI, but they're still going to support 2X, and they're still going to do the same for Crossfire. I'm sure AMD will, that is. Um, and if you think about it, you know, for what amounts to a $200 to $250 card running at, at 970 performance, you could conceivably get two of those in Crossfire and be competitive with current cards for less money. And on top of that, you're still looking at what should be a hefty boost from DirectX 12 um, when it comes out. That also kind of has me excited that I could get two of these cards, crossfire them, and get performance comparable probably to a 1070, 1080, not including any boost from DirectX 12. Well, I mean, Crossfire is always good, and there's a lot of people that are really looking at that. Honestly, in DirectX 12 titles, I would expect this to be significantly faster than the GTX 1080 by a margin of between 10 and 30%. You mean when Crossfired? Yeah, Crossfired, of course. Um, yeah, two of these cards will destroy a 1080 in DirectX 12. It will for add... probably 100 to $150 less than you would pay right now for a 1080. Oh, yeah. I mean, now, of course, we'll know this for 100% certainty on Wednesday. But I'm just going to throw that out there. That will definitely win. But I just want to let people know, this card is the everyman's video card. This card will work. Like you said, uh, 60 frames per second was pretty much solid on all the games that were shown. And once again, these are all DirectX 11 or OpenGL titles. No Vulkan, no DirectX 12. And 60 frames per second, 1080p. Pretty much all ultra settings across the board. They did show the settings in the video. And uh, it ran great. It ran absolutely fantastic. My big thing is, is everybody's going, oh, I need the 8 gig model. Honestly, the cards are not fast enough. These cards are not worth the 8 gigabytes, unless you're going to crossfire them, because then you're going to need the extra RAM because of the extra performance. But if you're running a single video card, you're probably going to be better off with the 4 gigabyte model, just like a GTX uh, 970 or 980. You know, that's plenty for those. They're meant to run at 1080p. The 980 can do a little 1440p, but not much. These are 1080p video cards. They will hold 60 frames per second. These are going to be great for your average gamer. Um, there's no reason for most people, probably 95% of people, to buy any other video card than this. Yeah, so I agree, but there's, there is one more thing that just popped into my mind that I feel like we should discuss, um, or at least mention. Is that if these are the car, if this is the performance we're seeing on cars comparable to a 980 and 970 for 200, maybe 250, probably closer to 200. Um, I'm excited for well, one more. Real reason. quick, before you jump on that, because you keep bringing up the pricing, um, they said it's going to be $200. We kind of understand that's going to be for the four gigabyte reference model. Um, 250 is the speculation for the eight gigabyte model, and I'm seeing speculation for around $300 for you know the. Uh, custom PCBs and all that stuff. Sure. I, I do want to put my two cents on this. If you start seeing these things near $300, I honestly would not say that they're worth it at that particular price point. You start getting to that price, you really might want to start looking at a GTX 1070 because you're getting into that gray area where cost, exactly. to, cost to benefit starts shifting more into NVIDIA's favor at that particular point. I'd say 250 and lower, yeah, these cards are definitely the way to go. I just wanted to throw that out there because the numbers I saw, I did not see a $300 card in today's market. 
No, I, I agree. Thank you for pointing that out. But the re other reason I was getting so excited, I just thought about, was that we know AMD currently holds the market for all consoles. They produce the chips. Am I wrong? No, that pretty much, uh, yep, that'd be all the major consoles. Right. So why this has me excited is we've got PlayStation Neo coming out this year and Project Scorpio coming out next year. And if we're getting this kind of performance for out of a $200 card, it makes me excited for what we might actually see in these new consoles. I mean, maybe not Neo so much. I doubt it's going to take advantage of it. It is coming out this year, and it's probably already set as to what it's going to be able to do and what's going to be in it. But Project Scorpio in particular really has me excited now because there's a good chance that if these cards with DirectX 12 can perform capably, that we will get a moderately okay price point on Project Scorpio and still get the performance they're talking about. Um, or it's going to be the Vega, but again, this performance that we see today has me excited for Vega's performance, which in turn has me excited for Project Scorpio. So I just wanted to throw that out there. This does mean good things for the console market as well. It does. I mean, the console market, basically once we get our hands on, you know, RX 480 DirectX 12 benchmarks, we'll have a pretty good idea of what Scorpio is going to be like. Um, because the RX 480 is a 5.8 teraflop GPU. Um, you know, that's within spitting distance of the six teraflops that, in, uh, I mean, Microsoft went ahead and announced. So, you know, that's pretty much what you're going to be getting. So we can pretty much see what Project Scorpio will look like here today, basically on next Wednesday. So that's kind of cool. What I find really good about AMD or their particular position being in with the consoles is once game developers dump DirectX 11 completely, which will still be a little while, and everything is DirectX 12, it'll basically be the same code that is on the Xbox One. And AMD, by default, will eventually have the most optimized drivers because driver overhead and, you know, the necessity of drivers in DirectX 12 and Vulkan is nearly non-existent. Everything is up to the developer to program. So the way that they do low-level programming for consoles will just simply translate over to PC. So I think they will have a serious advantage once that transition between console and PC gets there, you know, when they're basically using the same hardware. I think AMD will have a serious leg up. Uh, I agree. And, that, and that's really all we had to say, guys. Um, we want you to know, again, that this is all speculation, and uh, we are probably watching videos that you guys haven't seen, so you are going to have to take our word for it. We have no reason to lie to you. Um, but in the end, you know, we just hope that you enjoyed the video and that we've said something that keeps your interest. And if you like us, feel free to like the video. If you really like us, subscribe. Um, if you don't like us, let us know that too. Any comments, anything you guys have to say, we'd love to read it in the comments section. And uh, that's all I have. You guys have a good night. I hope you guys have a good night and stick with us and we'll get to the bottom of this with you guys.